what's up man, pretty neat, and you're so konnichiwa. So today's story is about one of my misfortunes whilst training for cross country skiing. For those of you who do not know already, I used to be a cross country ski racer and race for New Zealand, but I hardly ever got any time on snow, so I had to do a lot of cross training, like track running, cross country running, short track ice speed skating, inline speed skating, cycling, and of course what this story is all about, roller skiing. Now if you don't know what roller skiing is, it is basically cross country skiing but on a tar seal road um, instead of snow trails. So if you're wondering how the hell you can ski on a tar seal road, I will show you. This is with these things, they're the most horrible things ever but they help me train so I kind of have a love-hate relationship with them now these ones are built for speed not stability and they have no brakes I'm not sure if you can really see how unstable they might be but um, yeah they're not stable <laughs> Unstable, built for speed with no brakes equals carnage and today's story is about carnage. Now for those ski people who already know me, if they've trained with me, if they've raced against me or if at the very least they've seen the countless replays on Eurosport of my wipeouts, they will be able to very easily picture what happened in today's story. There's like three things that happened in this one incident which I'm going to tell you today. So you should get a little bit of a grasp of the things that happened to me and dare I say only me. But anyway, so there I was way out in the boonies um, on this road that never had any traffic on it and by no traffic I mean the occasional tractor maybe a farmer and a ute or you know maybe a farmer shifting sheep or cattle or whatever other than that never any traffic so it was perfect for um, roller skiing and on this road was a really long 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 downhill and at the end of that long downhill was about an 80 degree turn um, <laughs> which on roller skis with no brakes was um, rather hairy. Um, I don't know how many times I crashed on this corner, I don't know how many times I made it, but you never sort of really knew if you were going to um, make it or crash until the time came. <laughs> A lower centre of gravity helps with stability, but of course that means gaining speed, so it's much of a muchness. Now, before I continue, I must tell you about three terms that came about. I don't know if any other roller skier uses these terms, but when I started roller skiing, um, these three terms came about. One was grass brakes, the other was arse brakes, and the third was grass arse brakes. Now, grass brakes were for slowing down on the grass verge on the side of the road if you were lucky enough to have a grass verge. Um, so you could either put like um, one or both skis off and just slow down. Obviously with the softer terrain, uh, there's more resistance on the wheel, so you slow down. Um, but there wasn't always a grass verge, so yeah, things get hairy sometimes. Now the arse brakes um, were for stopping. Uh, if you had to stop suddenly or like slow down drastically, because these things have no brakes, the only thing you could do was just plant the arse brakes. By plant the arse brakes, I mean um, fall on the Tarsil Road rather heavily. But you could um, put the grass arse brakes on if you had a bit of a grass verge and some long grass um, on the side of the road so there would be nice soft leaning, better than Tarsil Road. Um, so <laughs> if you use the grass arse brakes you just, you'd just just go along and you'd either just tumble down or you'd actually dive. Like I'm not kidding, this is what you had to do because I have no brakes. 
so yeah you know they have to just slam their ass brakes the grass ass brakes dive into the grass and hope like hell that there wasn't a solid bank being hidden underneath a nice long grass or like a ditch or roadkill or um, a descent that has a sheep fence at the bottom just um, what this story includes <laughs> is kind of what it's all about but um, anyway so with those three terms explained I will continue with the story so I was going along this road going down this long downhill dad had just pumped up my tires so I was going super fast and um, where I was, there was a grass verge, so I could put the grass brakes on if I knew that there was something around the corner, like a, a tractor, a car, or you know, cattle or sheep or whatever, you'd be able to hear them around the corner. Because you couldn't actually see around the corner because of a bank. Um, so obviously if you heard something, then you'd put the grass brakes, or the arse brakes, whatever. Um, but this day in particular, I heard nothing so I thought oh well the coast is clear one thing you have to be aware of is uh, things like dirt and um, you know cow and sheep poop on the ground <laughs> it's rather slippery um, so you've got to be aware of things like that or stones that car leaves or whatever so you have to sort of like see where you can take your line but with this corner it's like 80 degrees um, this turn so you had to take a particular line or you just wouldn't make it. So anyway, uh, the coast was clear as far as I knew, I uh, heard nothing. So I stayed in a tuck. Now tuck, for those of you who don't know, is when you're all tucked up and you've got your poles out the back, um, gaining speed. So, lo and behold, I get around the corner and there's a mother duck uh, with little babies in tow crossing the road. And they went, oh my god, they were where I needed to go. And I thought, shit, the only thing I can do is run off the road. I had nowhere else to go and nothing else to do. But I thought, no, it'll be alright. If she keeps going and if they keep going, it'll be alright. They'll um, get out of my way. I'll be able to take my line. We'll clear each other fine. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go. It'll be fine. But no, um, Mother Duck decides to backtrack. She obviously heard me coming and got spooked. So she turned around and the babies sort of turned around and made their way very slowly across the road right where I need to go. And I was coming up on them so fast. If I went to the inside of them, I never would have made the corner. Um, and I would have had a very hard landing because there was... Um, you know, it was a Tarsil Road, and if I'd managed to get a little further, it was just stone, sharp stones and that. So, well, my other alternative is to just run straight off the road and launch into the grass. Um, I didn't actually realise how much of a descent there was on the side of the road. Because um, the road's here, and there was a little bit of grass verge, um, and... Then there was a little hump, like, I don't know, it was a little hump that had sort of long grass. And then it descended, and the, it was like um, swampland in the sense that it was long, uh, humpy grass. It wasn't actually swampland, it was just like swampland. And um, near the bottom of the hill was a, an old sheep fence, and the old posts were like all broken and everything. It was a really old fence and then it sort of kept going and then flattened out to the paddock so there I am I had nothing else to do so I just ran straight off the corner just launched I was like a ski jumper I was like this I was like I don't know if you've ever seen a ski jumper but they like they got their arms out the back and they're like trying to get as far forward as they can and land as far away as they can from the jump yeah, it's the ones that go down the hill and they're like, woo, yeah, hoo, 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 hoo. Anyway, I was doing a ski jumping impression, um, but instead of having my arms out the back and being all graceful, I was like, ah. And, oh my god, I, f I was like flying through the air, and I, f I flew so far that I actually felt myself descending down this hill. 
and I was flying thinking, oh my god, I hope I stop before the sheep fence because I don't want to like land in the sheep fencing or like get impaled on one of the old sharp posts and oh my god all these scenarios were going through my head. That's how long I was flying through the air for. So anyway, I didn't land in the sheep fencing, I landed very close, it was about sort of, mm, I don't know, that far away. Um, well, just over a meter or so, it was bloody close and I landed really awkwardly but I was just lying there thinking I'm so grateful that I didn't go at least, you know, just that little bit further and I would have landed in the fence. Um, I wouldn't have landed on the post, I would have landed in the fence. <laughs> like, I might have got my arm stuck or my head stuck or something. <laughs> Would have been absolutely stupid. I wish someone would have got the whole thing on film. But anyway, so eventually I swim up, swivel myself around and so my skis were traversed because remember these things have no brakes so you've got to be careful you plant them. But with this long humpy grass the wheels obviously just started to roll and they're sort of rolling down the humps and hold on so these would roll down the humpy bits, and these bits here, I don't know if you can see how worn they are from um, uh, incidents like this, but they were, they were just slipping down the humps. So I'm like trying to grab on to the grass behind me, um, but my body was just straightening out because <laughs> my skis were just rolling down the hill <laughs> and slipping down the hill. And of course, guess where I ended up? My skis went through the sheep fencing. Sheep fencing, for those people who don't know, is it's like chicken netting, but the holes are like that big. <laughs> so, big enough for these to go through and get stuck. <laughs> so, I was there just rattling away, trying to get out. I actually had to take them off to get them out because they were that stuck. Um, but what happened next was so stupid. Um, so yeah, that was like, well, one was launching and the second one was, um, you know, after being grateful that I didn't land in the fence, I ended up in the fence, so that was two. But number three, um, I was, <laughs> I had to take them off obviously to get them out and I thought, okay, trying to V-step up this hill is just pointless, it was way too steep way too soft, the humps were too big, so I just got my skis and I took my poles off and was charging up this hill and it's hard to walk in those boots. These are the boots that I had and like so they're not normal downhill boots but um, you know they're still hard to walk up a really soft grassy humpy hill and it was bloody steep and Lo and behold, remember there's no traffic on this road ever. Not one, but two cars come along. There's never any traffic on this road. But no, two, two cars come along. And I was there thinking, oh my god, if they see me walking up the hill with like carrying my gear, they're gonna know, like it was right in the corner, so they're gonna know that I obviously completely missed the corner and flew down the hill. Um. I didn't want them to know that. They would have laughed at me and then they would have gone and told everyone. Because people knew me, um, having a public profile with being an athlete, people knew who I was and I was the only roller skier around. <laughs> so I, they were going to know that I completely missed the corner and went flying. Now I can tell everyone because I'm not skiing anymore and I'm just past that shame stage. I just have to share this because it's just hilarious. I wish someone would have got the whole thing on film. So I jumped in the grass and hid. And I'm thinking, oh this is, this is just stupid. Jumping in the grass and hiding in the long grass till some traffic goes by. That is lame. But it was just an auto reaction. Like as soon as I saw the cars, um, my brain just clicked, oh my god they're gonna think that I um, you know, wiped out completely on this corner and they're gonna like laugh at me and um, ridicule me 
So I jumped in the long grass to hide so that they wouldn't see me at all. They might have even seen me because they had such bright clothing on. So <laughs> maybe they thought I was having a pee. But anyway, so that was um, the three in one incidents of me roller skiing out in the boonies. I was so sore and I had to ski like would have been about 15 and a half kilometers from home. So when the adrenaline wore off, I was really, really sore. But anyway, any roller skier should be able to commiserate with things like that. Um, you know, having no brakes on roller skis. So if you were a roller skier, or even just a skier, or even anyone else, if you've had wipeouts like that, feel free to share them. I love hearing these stories from other people. It's nice to know that things happen to other people as well. But the thing is, they just always happen to me, and um, I don't do things in halves. I do things in uh, fulls and then some. So, yeah, anyway, I have more Carnage stories coming up, so stay tuned, um, and I will come back uh, with more Carnage. I hope you had some um, amusement out of it, so bye for now, and have a good day. If you're going roller skiing, happy roller skiing.